Hello everyone, my name is Yara Haresh. I'm currently an F2 doctor in Lincoln County Hospital. As part of the ongoing concept map series, today we are going to cover falls. The aim of this presentation is not to tell you all there is to know about assessing patients after a fall, but to equip you with the tools you might find helpful in such cases. Hopefully after this presentation, you'll be able to use this diagram while assessing real patients. How to approach a patient. When we see a patient, first thing we need to do is think of relevant differential diagnosis associated to their presenting complaint, primarily so that we can ask target questions to narrow down or exclude certain conditions where possible. There are many different ways that work when brainstorming about differential diagnosis. The method used in this presentation is highly useful as it makes us think of conditions for each system in the body. This way of classification is called the surgical seed. In this table, you can see many of the various causes for falls, but not limited to only these. Remember to use the surgical seed method when seeing your own patients. Once you have done that, you can start taking a more detailed and focused history, perform a physical examination, request investigations, and reach your most likely diagnosis. Please have a look at this table for some common causes for falls. Falls can be divided mainly into two categories mechanical falls and non-mechanical falls. What do mechanical falls mean? It means that an external object or force led to the fall. In most instances, a variable that can be controlled. Once we have established that it was a mechanical fall, we may further categorize the cause into internal and external factors. External factors could include poor fitting footwear or certain footwear shoes that cause the patient to fall over or stumbling whilst using walking aids, such as Zimmer frames. Certain people may fall due to the unfamiliarity of a new place or due to it being too dark to visualize your surroundings. All causes are factors that are within our control to change or eliminate. As for internal factors, one may think of causes that are not physically worn, held, or related to the patient's surroundings. For instance, drinking alcohol is associated with instability. Some medications have side effects, including drowsiness, sleepiness, and low blood pressure that may all lead to a fall. Furthermore, not enough liquids or exercise may weaken or increase the risk of falls in certain people. Non-mechanical falls could be divided into multiple categories. Is it associated with loss of consciousness or syncope? If so, a full workup is needed as it can be due to various conditions some of which are benign, but some of which are dangerous. Upon taking history, make sure to ask general as well as focused questions directly related to your differential diagnosis. If you are suspecting a cardiac condition, ask about cardiac symptoms, cardiac history within the family, examine for any structural changes, raised GVP, edema, or heart murmurs. If you are suspecting orthostatic hypotension, measure a lying and sending blood pressure, and make sure to ask if they experience symptoms associated with postural changes or volume changes. Similarly, it could be a vasovagal episode, especially if associated with sudden neck movements or after a prolonged sending episode. If you are suspecting a traumatic cause, stroke, or other neurologically related causes, it is worth investigating further with a CT and MRI head. Other causes could be due to medications oxygen and sugar levels. Make sure to do an ATE assessment, including blood glucose measurements. Another non-mechanical cause for falls could be non-neurogenic weakness. Following a full workup, as before, you may find factors leading you towards an infective cause for the fall, or electrolyte imbalance, or organ failure, or dehydration, or even anxiety and depression. Vertigo can be another cause for falls. It can be classified as central or peripheral on the basis of vestibular symptom pathology. Vestibular symptoms originating from pathology into the cerebellum or brainstem are classified into the central type. In the slide, we can see central vertigo can either present as brief or transient or constant. Conversely, Symptoms arising from the inner ear or from the vestibular nerve are classified as peripheral, such as in this slide. 
Lastly, imbalance can be due to many causes which may lead to a fall. A full workup is required, as with every case. With bloods, we may rule out any obvious abnormalities. However, it may also be a neurological condition, such as discussed before. Therefore, a CT or MRI would be required. Another rare cause could be due to untreated syphilis. Therefore, sexual history is needed. Untreated syphilis may lead to condition called tapes dorsalis. Here are some of the references used in this presentation. Remember, create your own concept maps for different symptoms. And if needed, pause this video at any stage to have a closer look. Thank you so much for your attention.